How you doing folks? Well, uh, those of you who follow my channel regularly will recognize this car as being my wife's Mark II Golf driver. Um, this car was bought by myself for my wife for uh, about a year and a half ago. And uh, I have featured it before, but I'm going to talk you a little bit through it now and actually do a kind of a review on it. So um, basically, the Mark II Golf driver was the... Um, uh, it was a well-specced Golf, uh, which featured a lot of the trim of the, the GTI without the performance. So you still have drum brakes on the back and you have the choice of a 1.6 or a 1.8 carb engine rather than the fuel injected engine that would have been in the uh, Golf GTI. This one particularly has a three speed epicyclic automatic gearbox with a non-locking torque converter. Um, so it's automatic basically for short. Um, it's really well specced. You have spotlights, you have um, clear indicator lenses from the factory, you have the sportier looking uh, steel wheels, you have a nicer steering wheel, um, you have a rev counter, digital clock, central locking, there's the automatic shifter, and um, you have the uh, seats uh, that come in this trim with a lumbar support as well too, um, which I personally find quite uncomfortable, but there you go. This is a five door one. I don't actually know if the uh, driver came in three door, three door flavor, um, but uh, I've actually always liked Mark II Golfs. This is now the um, fifth one that I've had anything to do with. I'm sitting in the back. That driver's seat is adjusted for uh, myself. I'm six foot two or a metre 90 for those in uh, metric. And I have to say, it is a comfortable car to sit in in the back. Um, and I will, uh, I'll show you more about that now in a minute. But um, basically, uh, you do actually have a lot of extras, as I said. You have um, better stereo, so you have door speakers down there, as well as the dashboard speakers, which is great because the uh, dashboard speakers on their own, which come in the lower spec car, are useless. <laughs> so if, you, if you're like me and like your music, uh, you wouldn't be happy with them, but the door speakers are adequate. They're not amazing, but they're a lot better than the alternative. And um, this also has a sunroof. Now, uh, the sunroof unfortunately doesn't work in this car. It's one of those things I have to get around to fixing. So uh, let's um, let's uh, show you what the boot looks like. Now this here is my daily driver and I will actually do a review on that. That's a Toyota Aorus Hybrid, uh, second generation Aorus. And this Golf, the footprint of it is significantly smaller and yet it is more spacious in the inside than the Aorus um, by quite a long margin. Um, so uh, if you have a look at the boot there, yeah, you have the hump for the spare wheel. So that kind of gives you an idea as to how, what sort of space you're looking for. There's a split folding rear seat, which again was on the higher trim level. And you get this nice little badge on the back. Now that badge would normally be silver, but um, I got uh, one of the guys in work actually 3D printed that for me and I painted it red. So uh, I thought it looked the business. And um, yeah, so basically um, continuing around, We'll uh, have a look in the uh, in at the engine. Some would call this car honest, others call it original. I personally think it's very original, um, and uh, so the engine bay kind of reflects that. It is basically stock under here. It is a 1.6 carb engine, which develops 75 horsepower. And this one has a Weber carburetor, um, which I put on myself because the Pierberg carburetor, when they work for, when they work well, they work well. But when they don't, they are a nightmare to put right. And um, the Weber carburetor is a much simpler affair, albeit with a manual choke, um, which presents its own hassles in a way. The Weber carburetor is not perfect, but personally, I think it's a better alternative than a dodgy Pierberg. This car just would not idle when it was uh, when it was cold, um, with the Pierberg on. So uh, this was a much easier and cheaper option um, to put right. Um, it. Uh, this uh, this 1.6 block was used uh, for the diesel engines as well too, the 1.6 diesel engines and obviously a different cylinder head. But um, like you'll see where the, di the distributor drive is on this would have the um, vacuum pump on the diesel engine and uh, there'd be a blanking plate where the fuel pump is um, or the gearbox uh, gearbox um, ventilator. Even the 1.9 TDI that I'm fitting to the, to the camper van at the moment shares a very similar design of block. So I'm now sitting in the driver's seat and um, as I said, it is a comfortable car. It's spacious 
and um, its bright visibility is absolutely fantastic in it. And it's one of the great things about Mark II Golfs, it's the visibility. They, you can see everything in them. But um, what I particularly uh, uh, like is just the driving position. I'm not a huge fan, as I said, on the lumbar support, but um, like other Golfs I've had haven't actually had that, and they've been a more comfortable car as a result. But um, still, it's only a small thing, and to be honest with you, it's still a very comfortable car to drive on long journeys. The other thing about this car is the 1.6 carb engine with the automatic gearbox is heavy on petrol. It is, it'll do about 25 to 30 miles to the gallon. Which is not massively poor, you know. I mean, it's not a, it's not amazing, but it's not it's not desperate either. A lot of people go for the diesel engine versions of these cars now, and the 1.6 turbo diesel version of this with the the GTD was actually a gorgeous car. I had one of them when I lived in France, and I have to say I really rated that highly. But um, the 1.6 petrol with the automatic gearbox, really nice to drive, quite responsive. Um, it is not slow. Um, it it picks up through the gears nicely. Three speed automatic. It's not at home on motorways. So if you're kind of doing seventy five miles an hour, uh, one hundred and twenty k, um, it starts to get a bit revvy at that stage. Uh, so it's happier at kind of sixty uh, sixty miles an hour or one hundred k. So I tend to drive it at that speed. Um, I'm all right with that. But I have many times driven at one hundred and twenty k, which is the national speed limit on motorways in Ireland here, and um, it's fine. It's just you know you'll see the fuel gauge starting to move a little quicker than you would like at that at that rate um but uh yeah let's uh let's start it up you can have a listen to um to the beast that is this uh 1.9 e uh ez engine or easy engine which i always think is kind of a funny name for it but um yeah have a listen okay let's start it up and have a listen to be honest with you I really like driving this car. I drive it quite a bit as far as, uh, like, the, the the big kind of issue with it is the fuel economy. You're talking kind of 25 to 30 miles to the gallon out of this car. So, yeah, I mean, for a 1.6 carb engine with an automatic gearbox, I think that's pretty reasonable, but um, that's kind of what you're looking at. Um, but, you know, I mean, <sighs> there's very few kind of classic cars where you're kind of going to sort of get the fuel economy that my Toyota Aorus gives. I don't think there's any really. Maybe my Mini came close, but uh, you know I don't have that anymore. Um, much as I loved it. Uh, so yeah. Anyway, um, in the back I actually have a baby seat on the uh, on the right hand side uh, because the young lad likes to come with us and, uh, on occasion as well too. Um, he's ten months old, so uh, we obviously have to have the seats. Uh, there are. There's a lap belt in the middle, two rear seat belts, um, no isofix obviously, it predates isofix by quite a bit. But uh, being, the, being a five door, this car is spacious and uh, as I said before, there's lots of room in the back. I mean, as I said, my ca my seat is now um, adjusted back for my uh, leg length and there is loads of room in the back there. And I have to say, it is one thing I love about this, the fact that the car is actually bigger inside than the, um, the Aorus. It's like a TARDIS really. So. I suppose the next thing to do really is to uh, get it out and take it for a spin and I'll uh, explain to you what the handling and the driving is like. One of the things I pointed out when we were looking at the engine was the fact that there's a Weber carburetor conversion done on it. Now, the Weber carburetor conversion is grand but there is a few problems with it. One of the things is I don't think it's all that easy to start in the mornings. Um, so we're going to do that now. It's now uh, 6 o'clock in the morning and uh, I'm on my way to work. So, uh, choke is now on. I have a choke lever down there for it. Well, okay, it made a liar out of me, but uh, yesterday it did not start that easily. I think what happens is the float bowl actually dries out in the carburetor, and um, because the uh, fuel pump is mechanically driven, you have to crank the engine for a bit to get a bit of fuel into it, which is not ideal, really. But anyway, we're up and running now, so I'm going to get you set up in a stand and we'll uh, talk you through how this car drives. Okay, so we're just coming up on the junction now, so um, the engine's just sufficiently warmed up and um, I'll show you how, uh, how this car accelerates. Um, quite nicely actually, have a listen to how, uh, how well it gets through the gears. Third 
gear now, and that's top gear. So, um, we're doing 40 miles an hour. Um, I'll, sh I'll I have to stop at a set of red lights here, but um, we're pulling away now shortly. Um, the fact that it's a three-speed gearbox works absolutely fine for the most part. I mean, it's only literally a case where when you're on the motorway, as I said, it, it uh, sort of runs out of uh, runs out of gearing, and it could do it in overdrive really, and you don't have that. So. But 
you got a lot for that extra money and you got a very reliable car you got a very well built car and um, you know as I said it's spacious it's uh, it's like driving a goldfish bowl you can see everything the visibility is fantastic in this um, and um, yeah I mean there I am driving along 55 miles an hour it's like perfect you know I mean it doesn't uh, crash over bumps, there's no squeaks or rattles, I mean, there's, uh, I've driven, uh, the last Mark II Golf I had, uh, before this one, I had a, a, a diesel one, which had a 1.9 uh, straight diesel conversion done on it, now I had to do the head gasket on that, and, uh, which is fine, it's not a big job actually, to be honest with you, but, um, it wasn't the uh, higher spec, it didn't have power steering, which made it quite heavy to drive, um, and it had more mileage on it than the Hubble Space Telescope, I mean it was, I think it was about 270,000 miles on it, now there were things in it that were starting to kind of get a bit worn or a bit tatty, but it still drove really well, you know, I mean, and it was, uh, the, the 1.9 straight diesel engine in that car was actually gorgeous, I mean, it was, um, you, you get 55 miles to the gallon out of it all day and it was uh, powerful enough to pull uh, pull through the gears and pull along really really well I towed a um, Hyundai Santa Fe Jeep with it once as well too and it just it was you know it pulled like it pulled like a freight train to, to use that um, use that expression but uh There is a, there is that thing that keeps me coming back to uh, Mark II golfs all the time, and um, yeah, the quality is one of them. And I, I I love the look of them. I think they just have a real old school, cool style. You know, like the um, E30 BMW three uh, three series. Uh, you know that kind of look that you, you know it's a late 80s car but it, it you know it was a quality late 80s car and um, it's uh you know and I, I i i tend to keep this car for quite a while well i mean as i said it is my wife's car we bought it for her but uh, we intend to keep it for quite some time i've done a lot of work on it to kind of get it to a point where it is really well worth keeping and it's it's, it's a car that we can kind of jump into and use as and when we feel lot of fiddly little things, nothing of any kind of great consequence that I had to do with this. Uh, it, it, it was it was all kind of stuff like bushings, ball joints, brakes, um, and sort of the heater, a few electrical issues, things that just hadn't been addressed over the years. You know, I mean, it was a stupid thing. Like, for example, when we bought this car, there was a push button on the dashboard for the horn, and the, the button, obviously, the steering wheel wasn't working. And all it was was the slip ring behind the steering wheel was dirty. I took the steering wheel off, cleaned it, put the original wiring back in, and the horn worked absolutely fine. So, and I was able to pull out about um, five meters of extra wiring from underneath the engine bay. Um, and all of that, you know, they, those type of things, they're, they're easy little things to put right, you know, and, uh, yeah. So, um, I suppose, uh, yeah, I mean, the ultimate question, I mean, and the, the, the question I sought to answer here is, what's this car like to live with? Really good. And you could drive it every day if you wanted to, you know. Uh, the only thing is, is you have to have um, deep pockets if you were intending to do a lot of mileage. But uh, this is a, this would be ideal as the likes of a city or suburban car, uh, short commuting, that kind of thing. I don't. I, I do longer drives in and out of work. I mean, my drive, my commute is 33 miles each. Uh, 33 miles, or a little over 50 kilometres each way, and um, and that's what I'm doing now. During the COVID-19 lockdown, I'm not going to go out for test drives unless, uh, and and um, flout the rules. You know, this drive I'm doing is actually necessary for me to get to work, so that's uh, that's why we're doing it. But. Um, yeah, look, uh, I think I'm kind of babbling now, uh, but um, we'll leave it there, and um, yeah, we'll. Uh, I'll see you in a future video. Thanks very much for watching.
Okay, so uh, I love this big long straight stretch of road here. Uh, so uh, now that we have it uh, so empty, uh, let's do a standing start to 60 miles an hour. Too bad, is it? 